These characters were off the cuff. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie characters that were almost totally improvised. My conclusion was that this idea was not a practical deterrent for reasons which at this moment must be all too obvious. For this list, we're going over the fictional big screen characters whose dialogue or characterizations were crafted largely or significantly by the actors that played them. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10, Count Olaf, Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events. Well, hello, hello, hello. I am your beloved Count Olaf. Although this adaptation of the popular book series underperformed at the box office, it does contain a memorable performance by Jim Carrey as the villainous Count Olaf. I am uh, Stefano. I am an Italian man, and uh, I am here to assist him in his uh, research uh, as best I can, as well as to uh, facilitate and uh, remain observatory. Being an adaptation, one wouldn't expect there would be much room for improv, but Carrie's natural comedic talents with spontaneous dialogue were allowed to breathe on set by the director, leading to dozens of outtakes of the actor saying whatever came into his head. This can primarily be seen in the various personas Count Olaf adopts, as the wily antagonist's paper-thin disguises offer plenty of opportunities for Carrie to go nuts. He's lying. He's Count Olaf. That, oh, that horrible man you warned me about, where? Who? Right in front of you. Where's he at? Behind Captain Chef. Oh. No. I'll show him a thing or two. I'll give him the old wax on, wax off me, son. Number nine, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Despite being the title character, Beetlejuice doesn't appear in most of the movie that bears his name. However, Michael Keaton's energetic, manic performance is so great that even after seeing it 167 times, it gets funnier every time you see it. Not to mention the fact that you're talking to a dead guy! Now what do you think? You think I'm qualified? Originally envisioned as completely different in the script, with a more demonic look, Keaton, who was only on set for a few weeks, came up with the look of Beetlejuice himself, and also improvised most of his lines while on set. Are you a ghost too? I'm the ghost with the most, babe. It's safe to say that without Keaton, Beetlejuice wouldn't be the memorable character he is today. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, stop it! Hey, you're messing up here! Come on! Whoa! Whoa! Stop it! Whoa! Number eight, everyone, best in show. Well, sometimes I think he's gonna talk to the judge and say, hey, judge, hey, judge, look at me. Director and actor Christopher Guest is famous for films featuring mostly improvised dialogue, and while it was tempting to talk about This Is Spinal Tap, we elected to go with a more underrated movie of his. Best in Show follows a variety of eccentric characters who enter a dog show and their misadventures along the way. And I know that sometimes I'd be in one Starbucks and then you'd be in the other Starbucks. Mm -hmm. And then I think maybe, you know, I should go over to that Starbucks next the next weekend and then you'd be at the other Starbucks. So we kind of crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Although a rough plot was in place, virtually all of the dialogue and a lot of the characters themselves were fleshed out by the actors, which really helps the movie's mockumentary format feel all the more authentic. These dog owners are hilarious precisely because they feel like they could be real people. I used to be able to name every nut that there was. And that used to drive my mother crazy because she used to say, Harlan Pepper, if you don't stop naming nuts. And the joke was, of course, that we lived in pine nut. And I think that's what put it in my head at that, at that point. Number seven, Fred Fenster, The Usual Suspects. Number three, step forward. <laughs> This classic crime film follows a group of disparate criminals brought together by a mysterious mastermind to perform a job. One of these men is Fred Fenster. The character wasn't anything special as he was originally written, but actor Benicio Del Toro made Fenster his own. After reading the script and being dissatisfied with Fenster's apparent lack of effect on the movie's plot, Del Toro came up with Fenster's distinctive and borderline incomprehensible accent and mumbling demeanor. What are you saying? I say you'll flip you. He'll what? Flip you. Flip you for real. Yeah, I'm shaking. This not only made the character much more memorable, it also ensured that Fenster would be Del Toro's breakout role. You know, they treat me like a criminal. Uh, I'm not a criminal. 
You are a criminal. And what you gotta go and do that? Number six, Dr. Strangelove, Dr. Strangelove. Do we have anything like that in the works? A moment, please, Mr. President. Actor Peter Sellers portrays multiple characters in this satirical war movie. Although legendary director Stanley Kubrick allowed Sellers to improvise a lot of his dialogue for all of them, we had to give the most props to the character that shares the movie's title. It requires only the will to do so. The eponymous Dr. Strangelove is an eccentric, seemingly wheelchair-bound, scenery-chewing former Nazi scientist. Sellers delivers one of the most over-the-top Nazi characters ever put on screen with Strangelove calling the president Mein Fuhrer, possessing a wandering hand, and apparently forgetting that he can walk. I have a plan. <laughs> mein Fuhrer! I can walk! All these bizarre behaviors were Seller's inventions, and we cannot help but admire his comedic brilliance. Number five, Gunnery Sergeant Hartman, Full Metal Jacket. I am Gunnery Sergeant Hartman, your senior drill instructor. From now on, you will speak only when spoken to. And the first and last words out of your filthy sewers will be, sir. Do you maggots understand that? Speaking of Kubrick, Full Metal Jacket is another movie of his in which the director gave an actor free reign. Huh. That is not your daddy's shotgun, cowboy! R. Lee Ermey plays Gunnery Sergeant Hartman, the tyrannical drill instructor whose harsh demeanor forges some recruits into soldiers and drives one over the edge. Ermey was a real former drill instructor during the Vietnam War, so he was able to draw on his experience for the role, which he won after breaking down real Marines serving as potential extras. Hartman's characteristic insults became instantly iconic, and almost all of them, and around half of his lines, were improvised by Ermey. Why, you little maggot! You make me want to vomit! Number four, Dr. Peter Venkman, Ghostbusters. This supernatural comedy movie, which follows the title Ghost Catching Scientists, actually features quite a bit of improv from its actors. However, easily the most noticeable are many of the iconic lines spoken by Peter Venkman. Why worry? Each of us is wearing an unlicensed nuclear accelerator on his back. Venkman's dry, sarcastic wit is actor Bill Murray all over. Murray is famous for improvising in movies, and Ghostbusters is easily one of his most famous roles. All right. This chick is toast! And without Murray's deadpan, on-the-spot delivery, we would argue that the movie would be full of mass hysteria. Dogs and cats living together. Or at least only about half as funny. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria! Number three, Captain Jack Sparrow, Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. Well, well, Jack Sparrow, isn't it? Captain Jack Sparrow, if you please. It can be hard to imagine now, but Captain Jack Sparrow was not originally envisioned as he appears on screen. While still a washed-up swashbuckler, actor Johnny Depp developed Sparrow into the adult rock star pirate that appears in the movie and its sequels. This included not only Captain Jack's mannerisms and a few of his lines, but also his wardrobe, which he helped select. You are without doubt the worst pirate I've ever heard of. But you have heard of me. Executives were initially very leery of Depp's choices, considering firing him, but it's a good thing they didn't, because Captain Jack Sparrow has become an iconic character, even earning Depp an Oscar nomination at the 76th Academy Awards. Now, bring me that horizon. Number two, the genie, Aladdin. The movie may be called Aladdin, but the genie of the lamp that the young street rat acquires definitely steals the show. Hey! 10,000 years will give you such a crick in the neck! The wisecracking, shapeshifting blue man is one of the most memorable and influential animated characters in cinema history, and that is in large part due to Robin Williams' talents. The actor's style of comedy usually involves rapid-fire pop culture references and impressions, and that became the genie shtick, too. Can you make me a prince? Oh, let's see. Chicken a la king? <laughs> no. Yeah, that's king crap. I hate it when they do that. Caesar salad. Ah! Et tu brute? Nope. Aha. To make a prince. Williams improvised heavily in the recording booth, going on for long tangents in his signature off-the-cuff manner. For as influential as the genie is, we ain't never had a character like him. And that's thanks to Williams. What would you wish of me? The ever impressive. The long contained. <laughs> But never duplicated, 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 Genie of the Lamp! So many favorites of mine are on here. 
The genie, Bankman, excellent. Our number one is less a case of an actor improvising a character and more of an actor living or embodying or becoming a character. So let's take a look at some impressive honorable mentions and then we'll see our number one movie character that was almost totally improvised. I wash and dry. I'm like a single mother. Look, we all know home ec is a joke, no offense. It's just like everyone takes his class to get an A. It's bullshit and I'm sorry. And I'm not putting down your profession, but it's just the way I feel. I don't want to sit here all by myself cooking this shitty food, no offense. And I just think that I don't ever need to cook tiramisu. Got something you wanna ask me? We cannot let the humans pay for our mistakes. It's been an honor serving with you all. How about yellow? No, not yellow. Yellow and snow? No go. <laughs> Am I right? Humans, for the most part, don't have a clue. They don't want one or need one either. They're happy. They think they have a good bead on things. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Tony Stark, Iron Man Although it may have spawned the massive and massively successful Marvel Cinematic Universe, the first Iron Man film was actually more slapdash than most people know. The movie was shot with an incomplete script. Hi. Hi. Yeah. It's okay? Okay, go. You've been called the Da Vinci of our time. What do you say to that? Absolutely ridiculous. I don't paint. As a result, a lot of the movie's dialogue was improvised by the actors, including leading man Tony Stark, played by Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> Is that so hard? Thus, the hero who would lead the MCU for most of its first few phases was partially developed by Downey himself. The actor even ad-libbed the movie's famous final scene where Stark admits to being Iron Man at a press conference. Truth is, I am Iron Man. Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man in more ways than one. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.